In this section we're going to work on naming ketones and if you have naming aldehydes down uh, naming ketones is pretty simple. Um, the basic rules are as follows. We'll identify the parent chain, we'll number it, and we want to number that chain in the direction that gives the ketone carbon the lowest possible number. We'll change the parent ending E to O-N-E to designate a ketone, and we'll also have to designate um, its carbon number so that you can tell the reader what carbon that that ketone is on in the parent. We'll identify, number, and name our substituents, and then put the name together. So if we look at this example, the first thing we want to do is identify the parent chain, and that's going to be the chain that contains our ketone carbon. And our longest carbon chain with ketone carbon starts up here. And goes down to here. Next thing we want to do is number this. And we can number this chain in the direction starting up here or down here. But up here puts the ketone carbonyl at carbon 3. And that's a lower numbering. So we're going to start up here. We have an 8 carbon chain. From this we can um, name our parent. 8 carbons comes from octane. But what we're going to do is we're going to drop the E and add the O-N-E ending. So our parent name will be octanone. And we need to designate the location of the carbonyl on the parent, and it's on carbon 3. So we'll write this as 3 octanone. Now you may also see this written as 3 ohm, which just represents um, a newer form of IUPAC nomenclature. Um, but either um, is perfectly acceptable. Next we need to identify, number, and name our substituents. So we have on carbon 5, uh, the easiest way to name this is just as an isopropyl. And on carbon 6, we have a phenyl ring. Our final step is to assemble the name. So we'll arrange our substituents alphabetically and follow that up with the parent. I comes before P alphabetically. So we'll start with 5 isopropyl. And we have 6-phenyl, 6 and our parent will use 3-octanone. And that's our final name for this compound. If it's a cyclic ketone, um, it's a little different than the aldehydes because with an aldehyde having that um, hydrogen on it, it couldn't be directly embedded in the ring, but a ketone can be directly on the ring or directly part of the ring. So what we're going to do is we're going to identify the parent and the parent's the ring that contains that ketone carbonyl. We'll number the ring and we'll start by giving uh, the carbon containing the ketone, the number one designation, and then we'll number around the ring uh, to give the lowest possible substituent numbering, and we'll see if there's a tie, we'll switch to alphabetical priority. Uh, just like before, for our parent, we'll change the E to O-N-E, and 
we don't really need to designate the position of the ketone because it's always carbon 1 in a ring. From there, we'll identify our substituents and assemble the name. So in this example, first thing we want to do is identify our parent, and our parent is the seven-membered ring containing the ketone. So we can highlight that. Next thing we want to do is number the ring, and to start, we'll pick the ketone carbon as one, and we can number clockwise or counterclockwise. Well, if we number clockwise, we'll get a substituent at one or at two and seven. If we number counterclockwise, we'll get a substituent at two and seven. So we can't make a decision based on substituent numbering. So now we'll switch to alphabetical priority and C, chloro, comes before P, propyl. So we'll make chloro carbon two. Okay, now we have our numbering down. We can go ahead and name our parent. Um, a seven carbon cyclic ring is cycloheptane. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop this E and change that to O-N-E. Again, you can put the one in front of there to designate the position of the carbonyl, but it's really not necessary. Next thing, we'll identify our substituents. We have two chloro and seven propyl. Finally, we'll assemble our name by writing our substituents in alphabetical order, followed by the parent. Chloro comes first. Two chloro. Seven propyl. And we finish the name off with our parent, cycloheptanone. and there's no spaces in that name. One final situation you might run into is having more than one ketone in a molecule. And in that case, you'll name it as an alkane dione if there's two, trione if there's three, tetraone, and so on. So for this first example, um, our parent chain is the one that contains all three ketones. Uh, numbering, we'll number from right to left because that'll put our first ketone on carbon two versus carbon three. Okay, now for the name, We'll start with our substituent, which is 4-methyl. And then we'll give the designation of our um, ketone positions, 2, 3, and 5. Seven carbons is heptane and to specify that there's three ketones we'll write trione and since we used this tri uh, we didn't drop the E from the heptane name okay now you could also see this written as heptane 235 trione. So the way that's written can be um, changed just a bit depending on if you're using a newer or older version um, of IUPAC naming. 
Okay, in the example below, we have a cyclohexane ring. We have carbonyls at 1 and 3. So we would name this 1, 3, cyclohexane dione since there's two.